Glad to have you back. The federal government has signed a memorandum of understanding with uh, Lab4, a United States firm, to establish sustainable employment opportunities for Nigerian youths. According to the Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, this initiative aligns with President Bola Tinumbu's eight-point agenda relating to global trade agreements and talent exchange worldwide, Uloma Oyemachi reports. With a population of over 200 million people and 75% of that as youth plus, Nigeria's unemployment rate, which soared to 5.0% in the third quarter of 2023, the narrative needs to change. This is why the federal government, through the National Talent Export Program, is working towards employing over 1 million Nigerians within the span of five years through business process outsourcing. The NATEP has a website. And um, everybody who is interested in participating should go to the website and apply, because the main question will be how do we, uh, how do people actually know about this and participate? This is huge um, because it allows Nigeria to sort of accelerate its its talent export much more quicker. Some of the business process outsourcing roles, such as virtual administrative assistants and telesales representatives, have garnered attention from stakeholders. These roles are poised to elevate Nigeria's status as a prime destination for service export and outsourcing. What will not change is our commitment to providing employment to the multiple talents that we have within the country. So this is just the first of its kind and the first of many more to come. With this, we can almost democratize the issue of BPOs. And we can have people having 10-seater, 20-seater BPOs, so we can catalyze the micro, the mini, and the mega BPOs. I am at one of the busy areas here in Abuja City Federal Secretariat, and I'm here to find out from FCT residents what they think about the National Talent Export Program and whether they think it is something they would like to be a part of. I don't like the idea of uh, citizens being moved abroad looking for greener pasture. It's better you stay in your country to develop your country. If um, they will have to be, you know, uh, make sure that everything is um, based on competence and uh, not. Uh, uh, list from above, you know, uh, my brother, my sister, that is what is killing Nigeria. If that innovation can lead to more development, in fact, economically, politically, social, cultural. The collective presence of stakeholders from various sectors at this meeting underscores Nigeria's commitment to forging a strong path for youth development and mutual prosperity across the world. Uloma Oyemachi, TVC News, Abuja. Well, let's get talking now, being joined live from our Abuja studios by the National Coordinator of the Nigerian Talent Export Program, Dr. Femi Adeluyi. Dr. Adeluyi, good afternoon and thank you for joining Business Nigeria. Good afternoon, Tulu. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me here. Yes, I'd like to start with the fact that NATEB was launched on the sidelines of hunger in uh, 2023. Tell us what you're cut out to do. All right. So NATEP, you said, was um, it's actually Niger National Talent Export Program. Um, it okay. was launched on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly, actually on the 22nd of September last year. So it's going to be six months on Friday. And our mandate is simple. Create an environment that will lead to one million service export jobs. And they will have two channels through which this will, is going to be achieved. The first one is the channel of business process outsourcing. And then the second um, channel is the channel of physical talent export. So we are trying to catalyze the industry, grow the EPO industry, grow the talent export industry to ensure that Nigerians can have gainful employment. And what I would like to also state is that the jobs that, the main jobs that are being targeted by NATEP are jobs that are currently outside Nigeria. So we want to get those jobs for Nigerians or get those jobs outsourced into Nigeria. And we also have the added benefit of getting foreign exchange into the country as a result of that. Do you think Nigeria has that capacity or the potential to provide this high quality talent for the global market? I have absolutely no doubt about that. I've been um, in the workforce for over two decades. I've had the opportunity to um, live on different continents, live and study on different continents. 
I've an, and I've interacted with Nigerians both within the country and outside the country, and I have no doubt that we have the capacity to be able to benefit from the opportunities that are provided in the global market in terms of outsourcing and talent exports. In fact, there's a report by the World Bank that said that an average, I mean, averagely Nigerians or Nigerians are able to, 13, over 39% of Nigerians are able to rise to the top of their careers compared to much lower numbers for people from other countries and even people born in the United States. So we have the capacity that has never been in doubt. And one of the things that uh, Mr. President is doing through uh, the office of my principal, the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Doris Uzokaniti, is to create that enabling environment so that Nigerians can show what they are made of and take, up, uh, take advantage of the opportunities and the jobs that are available out there. For clarity for me, I would like to ask, uh, there's AFCFTA, which are also supposed to boost in traffic and trade uh, and all of that. So I'm thinking, how does this also queue into, because about services too, uh, will be exported under the AFCFTA. So are you also queued into that? Yes, we are. So um, uh, the, the NASA program is liaising with the AFCTA, uh, African Continental Free Trade Agreement Office, which is also liaising with my um, principal, like I said. And we're working together. Incidentally, at the World Economic Forum some months ago, I was with the uh, person in charge, and we've been liaising to see how we can also take advantage of that. So that's at the Africa level. But, you know, we're also targeting the large market that is available, for example, for the BPOs, the large market that is available both in the United States, in Europe, in Asia, and so we'll do that as, as um, in, along with what you are doing with the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And if I may um, mention here, Tolu, you know, we're focusing on a number of specific sectors. Right now, all of us know what um, the COVID pandemic made us to realize that it's very possible for people to work remotely and have quality results and have, uh, be efficient at their jobs. And what we're doing in NATEP is that we're focusing on a number of sectors we call the impact sectors. Impact as an I-M-P-A-C-T. I is for the insurance sector. M is for medical sector. P is for professional sector where we have accounting services, banking services, legal services. A is for the artisan sector. Uh, the minister started a, an initiative called the Super Initiative. Super means skill up artisans, a program where we want to upskill 20 million uh, Nigerians, get them certified artisans, and you know, and they will serve the Nigerian market, and some of them will also serve um, the global market. For example, we have um, a deficit of tens of millions of artisans in Europe. We're liaising with Germany, we're liaising with a number of these countries for Nigerians to be able to take advantage of the opportunities. So after A, we have C. C sounds for the creative sector. You go to Bari, you go to Boston, you go to different parts of the world. You find out that Nigerian music, Nigerian movies are easily uh, the uh, music and, and movies of choice. We enjoy them. They make us happy. We want a situation where it also translates to jobs and benefits the economy. And T, last but not the least, stands for the tech sector, which will... Uh, underpin all the sectors because we use the um, internet, we use the uh, we use these platforms to be able to communicate and take advantage of the jobs that are available. Well, uh, let me ask you more on that. What really will be the role of the United States in this initiative? So the NATEP initiative, or what we, was signed yesterday? Yes, yes, what was signed yesterday? Okay, so. Lab 4 is a company that is based in the U.S. And so the United States, actually, um, the United States Embassy helped to connect us to them and we had a, um, several meetings. So they provide that, they serve as facilitators, more or less. And um, like the minister said yesterday, Lab 4 is just one of the partners that we'll be working with. So the United States government will help to facilitate because it's going to be a win-win for both governments. Uh, for example, what is... Um, being proposed or what we signed yesterday with Lab 4 is a situation where the small and medium enterprises in the United States 
you know you have many of them wanting more employees but it's difficult for them to you know probably um, employ more people in their sector but they feel that you know these services can be outsourced to Nigeria and will get people that can have full-time roles to support these businesses in the U.S. That way we also get the funds into the Nigerian economy. Uh, we have each worker getting between $300 and $2,000 depending on the role. And not just that, the um, BPOs, the business process outsourcing institutions, also benefit from it because we have a situation where the BPOs get between $100 and $150 per person per month in, um, for using their facility. So that way we want to encourage people across the country. People have houses, people have um, centers that you know, are just lying fallow to use these centers as BPO so that the people that take on the roles can physically come to work because um, the partners prefer a situation where the workers actually go to a physical location to work rather than working from home. Mm. Sounds so, so, so I I interesting. Uh, I saw a survey uh, showing that that market as at 2020, that's the talent sourcing industry, is about $620 billion as at 2020. And now it's about, um, okay, it's projected to be 904 in 2027. Well, I'm interested now in Naira and yes. Kobo. If you have to look at what Nigeria will gain <laughs> from this. <laughs> what do you think would be, it could not be specific, but what should we be looking at? Because we need these remittances okay. and this is another way for it to come in. Yes. So, for example, NATEP, like I said, is targeting one million jobs. So, from what we've done with Lab 4, what the projections are, we're able to get 1.2 billion from what is coming in just for the salaries, apart from what is coming in to support the BPUs. So multiply that by 20, you know, it talks about what we can be getting annually. It could be upwards of right now, um, the country gets remittances in the range of about $20 billion a year. With what we're doing in NATEP, we're able to match that or even surpass that. And we believe that, you know, the more people get to know about Nigerians that are doing well outside even this outsourcing space, the 1 million that we're targeting can become even a small number compared to what we eventually get. Um, right now, so you know the outsourcing industry of India grew so fast and it helped the economy. And same thing with the um, outsourcing industry in the Philippines. And it grew such that, you know, eventually Indians started taking up roles outside the country. Today, more than 50% of the um, companies in Silicon Valley, the tech companies, are have their CEOs being Indians. We believe that, you know, this is something I want to pursue. At NATEP, we're dreaming big, even though we're starting small, but we believe that we can scale fast. So we want a situation where NATEP will help to create and catalyze these jobs, these BPO centers, and BP, uh, the BPO industry. And also, like you said, the Naira and Copper help to help us with our uh, foreign exchange liquidity by getting funds to be back into the country. So, for example, the people that are going to be uh, beneficiaries of the outsourcing jobs will receive their funds in foreign exchange in Naira. That's what we're targeting, that it comes into their domiciliary accounts. Same thing for the physical talent exports. We have been liaising and uh, discussing with the people that we're trying to partner with. Uh, we want a situation where the funds come back into the, into the country, into Nigeria, so that Nigeria can benefit from... Um, whatever we're doing in terms of creating jobs. It's very interesting. And I think monitoring and evaluation will be key so that this can be uh, uh, measurable. We can measure achievements to it. Because I, I was to ask you, creating one million jobs in the next five years, uh, bringing FX through remittances from talent and all of that, uh, one million jobs seems to me like a tall order. But if you're going to break it down, how you intend to achieve this, that will be one. And what more do you want Nigerians to know about this program? Are you sure this will not encourage the Jackpa syndrome that we already have at hand? You know, shortly before I came for this meeting, someone was talking about um, one of the meetings where um, the president attended and there was a joke about Jaguar. And he said, that, look, we want to, whether you like it or not, so this, these are my words, whether you like it or not, people are making arrangements to leave, right, or to travel. But we want to um, guide the process. So 
we don't want to focus on illegal, illegal migration. We want to have managed migration such that these people, these citizens of ours, which are ambassadors, can travel out, or travel out and get jobs that they are treated with dignity. We, you talked about monetary and evaluation. We're going to work with the employers of labor. We want to make sure that our people are treated well, they're treated with dignity, you know, they're not shortchanged. I want a situation where, you know, the um, environment will be conducive for them to repatriate, to get their funds into Nigeria. And you know what, like I shared concerning the Indians, it's because they were able to go out, gain the experiences that they did, that they now have taken charge of many of the top tech companies in the world. And it's benefiting India eventually. So we believe that, you know, if we guide the process, if we support them, if we make sure that they are treated well, it will eventually benefit the country because they can also come back to support the economy. And what we're doing in the, the, the partnerships we're having, we're looking at, you know, short-term movements. So it's not as if we're just getting the people to move over and not come back. We, it's two years, three years, so that they can gain the experience, gain the funds, and they can come back to the country and even set up businesses that will be um, successful. So we believe that even though they're going out, you can make sure it's a win-win situation where they can still um, contribute and benefit the economy. And a large part of what we're doing at NATEP, even though we're talking about the talent export, we know that the outsourcing jobs will be much more than the talent export jobs. So we're looking at these two channels and focus, focusing on them simultaneously. Hmm. Outsourcing, indeed. I, I think I, I see Nigeria is yet to take advantage of that space. I think I, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, but how receptive also are youths to this program? How have they been turning out, talking about coming to, uh, maybe coming to uh, NATEP with regards to this? Okay, so since, we, uh, since the launch in New York, we've been doing the underground work. We've been putting um, strategies, policies in place. We've been interfacing with the stakeholders, and the reception has been amazing. So it's just now we've gotten the first batch of outsourcing jobs, which will, the onboarding process will start from next month. So what right now we're encouraging people to do is to get on our website, www.natep.gov.ng, to fill out their profiles so that, you know, as the jobs come, we can match the profiles to the jobs. And not just that, we also want the current business process outsourcing companies as well as intending business process outsourcing companies to register such that as we map the people to the jobs, we also try to map the people to BPOs that are close to where they are. Because our dream is that, you know, people can have BPO centers near their houses so that they don't even have to spend money, much money on transportation. That way, you know, they have this good quality of life and they're able to benefit from um, the resources that they're going to get. Hmm. We'll keep a tab on this, and we hope to have you join the program again to do an assessment of all of this. We wish you all the best. Dr. Femi Adelui. I look forward to you. Thank national, you so much. Yeah, National Coordinator, you, Talent Export Program. Thank you for your time.